what happened on that plane flight heading to Washington, D.C.? Could you walk me through what happened with your taking off, yeah. getting ready well, to go? We, yeah, as we were, uh, we had a full plane because we brought the band and the cheerleaders and a lot of luggage, and it was it was packed. And a uh, very, very windy day, extremely windy day. So it, uh, some people were nervous. I wasn't. You just, you know, you just, this is what we do. We, we get in planes and goes. And uh, as we were taking off, uh, just when you, you feel that where it's going to, you, you think you're about to go up, uh, they hit the brakes. And, and now we're just hearing, you know, either PA or the flight attendants yelling, hey, you know, head down, stay down, head down, just like what I understand in the, in the movie Sully. And we, I, my, my, my goodness, we started what I'm calling a, a toboggan ride at that point that, uh, well, you don't know where you're going. You can't see what's in front of you. So uh, it just kept going and going and going. It seemed like 100 yards, and when I saw it was 400 yards, it would tell you um, how fast that plane was going when it had tried to shut it down. And finally, we hit something. And we hit a fence, apparently, and then there's a ditch that stopped us. And thank God we didn't flip. Uh, it just stopped. Uh, and we then it, it, what, what, I, what I say is the way that – spontaneously our team our band our cheerleaders our coaches our a band got, got out of that plane uh we'd win a final four if we could execute everything like that it, it was it seemed like in minutes everybody was off the plane guys my uh six two six six nine and seven foot centers threw an emergency door out the window and getting the cheerleaders are jumping out of the wings and on the other side it was <laughs> happened with my manager took one people are jumping out the wings the slides go down uh, the staff and everything. We had a lot of women and kids on it. We promised them one trip for sure to the Big Ten tournament. And uh, so everybody loaded up their family. So we had two-year-olds, four-year-olds, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds <sighs> slide. <laughs> and I'm just telling you, we turned around. The motors are still going. The fumes are everywhere. And I looked around, and everybody's off safely. It's just like a miracle. It was a miracle that no one was hurt and that, that, every, that the plane got to that point that we could just stop and uh, get away from that plane. So what happened next, Coach? I mean, what do you well, do? Is it, it was we, we don't have a plan for that one either. So it's, yeah. it's really, I mean, I'm talking gale force winds, 50, 60 miles an hour. We stood around for about 45 minutes trying to figure out. A lot of people left their their phones and their uh, their belongings on the cabin. So we finally got in, in touch with some people, and uh, some fire trucks showed up. And but we stood there for a good hour, uh, 45 minutes at least waiting for buses because we were way out. So finally, we just walked to a terminal, maybe a half-mile half, half mile walk. We just walked to a, an area to get out of there. Got the women and children out of there. They were nice enough to give some bands for them. And we just sort of, everybody just counting their blessings, Rich, just just absolutely counting your blessings and saying we made, we made it. We made it. Co- Coach John Bielan of Michigan joining me here. So at what point did your mind start turning to basketball, that, okay, we're fine, we're yeah. good? Now we gotta. We, now we gotta get to DC and we gotta play a basketball game. For, for the first time in uh, in probably six months, uh, really not to the to the next day. Other than logistics, what are we gonna do? We 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 sort of decided can we get another plane today? And uh, within no time, that was an easy decision. We're not going anywhere today. We are. Uh, and the weather was still bad, and um, we just had to make this quick call to. Let's spend the night. Let's talk to the Big Ten, see if they can move some games back. And we'll try and get out the first thing we can in the morning, whether it's commercial or another airlines and uh, another plane. And uh, let's get our guys housed in a hotel and let's talk about it. And when that sort of happened, we just we left it up to them. We really did because they were shaken up, as, as you can imagine. Everybody was. Nobody anxious to get back in a plane. And we just left it like this. Hey, we – our plan is to leave at 6:30 in the morning. Uh, Delta and uh, uh, Delta Airlines and the Pistons. We were able to get the the uh, big plane that that uh, the Red Wings used, that the Pistons used, that Delta provided for us. And uh, 6:30, everybody was waiting at the door, knowing we had a 12 o'clock game that day. And <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah, and then you're wearing your practice uniforms, right? Wearing practice uniforms. I got to go back to Wednesday. During practice, because of the windstorm, the lights went out when we started practice. So we walked through some things in the dark. I think that was a key move. I didn't get to coach enough, 
So then they were going to be better. <laughs> we we saved our legs, and um, that was a key move. We didn't get to practice that day either. So it's a great lesson for every coach, for every player, that it doesn't always have to be perfect. If you got a lot of will and a lot of love and a lot of teamwork, a lot of good things can happen. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.